Joshua Smith here, and welcome to the GSD Mode Podcast. Now get shit done and smash that subscribe button now. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode Podcast interview. Every single week, I interview top real estate professionals, top entrepreneurs, and straight up top badass that they're just dominating their space. And today, you guys, we've got another amazing rock star on the podcast today. So our guest today is Eddie Lack. So a quick background on him and uh, just want to give you guys an idea of, of what you're going to learn during this episode. So, you know, Eddie, and this is insane. This is this is mind-blowing, man. Um, his first year of real estate, jumps into real estate, first full year in real estate, um, does over $12 million in gross volume, sold as an individual agent, and breaks into the luxury market where he is representing, you know, million dollar plus uh, uh, buyers and sellers in the marketplace. And this dude is just on fire. So he was a professional hockey player, uh, 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 you know, for the, the it, which was his first career. Um, uh, retired when he was time to retire from that industry or that profession, jumped into real estate. And again, in his just crush out of the gate within the first 12 months, bam, from getting licensed over 12 million in production, which is so rare. Uh, that first year can be so tough. And the momentum that he's created, and, and, and this dude's just going to have a massive, massive uh, career. Well, in this podcast, Eddie breaks down um, how he did it, you know, right? Like what he started doing from day one, you know, what, what first off led him in, into real estate and, uh, 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 you know, how, how, uh, uh, well, he went from being a professional hockey player to pivoting <coughs> and transitioning into real estate, you know, but then uh, we go deep into, all right, man, in that first 12 months, because as you guys know that, that have been in this industry, um, man, your, your, your first 12 months is tough because it can take six months just to build up enough momentum for you to start to getting clients. And, you know, he talks about how he leverages SOI and continues to grow that, what he's done for new business and new growth and, and, uh, uh, you know, how he had to overcome some mindset stuff and how he shifted during, because all this happened in 2020 during COVID, during the shutdown, all of this, this was all his first year, what he did to quickly pivot, even being new um, um, and all of that. So again, he goes deep in all this. And I know you guys are going to gain so much out of this uh, interview with Eddie. Now, real quick, before we jump in, if you haven't already, make sure to snag my new book, Dominate Your Real Estate Business, Top Tips from a Top Producer personally written by me. It's a hundred percent free. It's actually a digital ebook that is going to be delivered in your email box and it's delivered in your email box within seconds, hundred percent free, nothing being sold, no bait and switch, none of that crap. Um, uh, it's got 42 chapters. Each chapter is a different tip, different strategy. These are just things that I've learned that are absolutely crucial that you need to have and, and understand and implement inside your business um, to go out there and have massive success and things that I've learned over my 16 year journey or almost 16 year journey now that have allowed me and helped me become one of the top realtors and team leaders on the planet. And there's a lot of breakdown in this book, man, everything from, you know, uh, uh, knowing your numbers and what to track and how to track. Um, um, you know, important things of, of knowing about, uh, get, you know, getting a CRM and what that looks like, um, different lead generation, uh, 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 uh tips and follow-up and conversion tips and objection handlers, um, as well as things like time management and goal setting and planning and daily routines. And, you know, all those things that need to come together for us to have massive success and for us to be able to go out there and dominate our real estate career. So go to Joshua Smith, Again, Joshua Smith freebook.com snag your 100% free copy right now worst case you don't like it just delete the email yeah right again 100% free nothing's being sold there there's no bait and switch no fluff you'll love it so um and make sure those of you that uh, do go out there to, to download i know you get some follow-up emails the follow-up emails that i send you there's a couple um additional tips that i wanted to send you that uh, after the book was done you know right as i'm reading i'm like oh man i wish i would have included those you know right um so i created some more in-depth videos where you get some other tips and again in those free tips nothing being sold um, um but then i like to just check in on you man see how you're enjoying the book see if you have any questions love to get your feedback you know whatever um uh you know that way i can support you and i just love hearing that feedback man of of you know how it's impacting you so again joshua smith freebook.com all right let's jump on in with my man eddie and uh, uh listen uh, uh to him on his journey and uh, uh how we can go out there and learn from his journey so we can continue kicking ass in our business all right eddie my man welcome to the gs demo podcast dude thank you so much for having me i'm so excited 
Yeah, no, man, I'm stoked, man. It ends up being a small world. We're, we're here in the same market. And, uh, um, you know, you're a dude that uh, had a lot of success with your your career path, if you will, before you jumped into real estate at a very high level, which we'll talk about, I'm sure. Um, um, and then you've just been crushing it in real estate, man, and continue to grow and crush it. And and so I'm excited to, to pick your brain and for us to all have the opportunity to learn from you, man. Um, you know, <clears throat> before we get into you know, all the amazing things that you're up to today and the things that, you know, continue to help you grow and, and create more and more success in your real estate business. You know, I'm always intrigued in our guest journeys that led them here in the first place. Um, you know, so if we're riding the clocks, I mean, I know you were a professional athlete for a lot of years and so forth. Like, you know, what, what led to, I guess, th this overall journey and, and, you know, you getting into this space in the first place? Yeah. So I, I, uh started playing hockey back home in Sweden and, and, and uh, uh, played hockey over there until I was about, um, I think I was 21 when I came over here and was for fortunate enough to have like a nine year, nine year pro career over, over here. And uh, when I had my second hip surgery, I was kind of just like, uh, not really knowing what I was gonna do, but uh, my family has always been in real estate, and we always uh, in, we have three hotels that we manage back home in Sweden, and I just wanted to like do my own thing and like start my own thing instead of moving back home and just like relying on what someone else started started start, start, started started right so uh yeah i i uh, my wife actually uh, decided that we were going to live in in phoenix or scott scott scottsdale because she moved with me f for 10 years with like hockey and everything and i'm just like all right when i retire where where, where do you want to live and she's like well i'm like from chicago there there's a lot of people moving from chicago to arizona so i mean we can try it out and i was like great let's try 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 it out and i was in a so i was still on crutches when i took my real estate license and 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 yeah just ju just like jumped right in yeah love that so what what year was that that you made the re decision to retire from hockey and transition to real estate so i had my 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 hip surgery in december 2018 uh, and we moved back here uh, full time in january 2019 and like that's when i just started taking like the classes and everything and uh i passed the test and then i had to wait for my work permit since i'm sweet sweet swedish and i and i had to to wait for like the green card and everything and i got that i think in november last year so yeah yeah dude and what's crazy about this man is you've had so much success in this industry in such a short, short period of time. I mean, it, you know, and, and again, this might be, you know, uh, our, our listeners, you know, first experience with you, um, you know, but I mean, dude, it, it's, I mean, you're out there selling and listing, you know, high end luxury properties and, and, you know, um, and again, just, and we'll, which we'll get into that, um, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious with um, it, what your because look dude and i you know i do i played a little bit of sports as a kid like i mean i was no good i just played sports sport? like a lot of kids you know well rest i wrestled and then i played football you know right? right um you know elementary junior high you know and a little bit high school um um you know but it, it, dude it, i can only fathom you know the level that it takes to even get to the collegiate level then from there to go to the pro level i mean the amount of work the amount of sacrifice the amount of discipline the amount of 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 you know just kind of all consuming all folk you know right that, that it takes to get to the top of of that to make it to the professional game and be the top of the top yeah. you know, i got to imagine a lot of those foundational items that allowed you to create success there have, have been able to carry over and allow you to create so much rapid success in this really short period of time in your real estate career. Um, you know, what, what, as you reflect back on this, you know, what are some of those things that you think that uh, were crucial to allow you to have success 
with, with your hockey career that have carried over into now your, your real estate professional career? I just think that, that when I li- like something and I like to do something that I just get obsessed with, with, with it. Right. And like, I, I, I have to learn everything around it and I have to uh, just like do everything I can to succeed. Right. And, and, uh, that's what I think that hockey taught me that, that, that like, whatever I, I put my mind into, I like know that if I just stick with it, I'm like going to succeed eventually. It, it like might not be today or tomorrow, but it might be like a month from now or like a year from now. And like, as long as I'm doing the right things and I'm putting like the right effort in like i i know that eventually i'm gonna s- succeed i think yeah i love that man and, and i love you know that you said obsessed you know because I, I you know i don't again i i'm not in the the you know sports world if you will so i don't i mean i have some friends that were ex-professional athletes and so forth um, um but whether it's that or regardless of what the success is man you know musicians or or or, you know most of my relationships are you know with highly successful entrepreneurs but i don't know anybody that that's created big success in any aspect of life whether it's health and fitness whether it's being an amazing parent whether it's with business or or athletics or whatever that isn't obsessed you know right so um 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 you know like you're you're not like a lot of people jump in this and like oh you know i'm gonna give this a shot i'm gonna give this a try they kind of dabble um um but can you kind of go i mean just to go deeper into to kind of how your mind works and what that kind of obsessed and i'm all in you know like what what does that look like? Like when you decided to come down this path, like what did that look like from even a study self-development aspect, you know, right. And so forth. Yeah, no, like I, 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 I think that uh, that kind of describes me a lot. Like I, uh, so when I had my sur- surgery and everything, it wasn't a hundred percent clear that I was going to, retire right but i just saw in my mind i like saw that maybe this was not the thing for me anymore and i just kept 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 getting hurt and i was hurt and i was just like i i want to try something new and like once that 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 like switch happens in my mind like I don't think for a second about like what could have been or like what, uh, what I've done in like the past or anything. Like my focus is just like today, like what, what can I do today? Right. And, and, and uh, uh, from, from like the start, uh, it was all just about read, 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 reading books and like learning about real estate in general, because I've, 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 I've done it as an investment and everything, but I've never been like the leader in the transaction, right? And, and uh, that was the thing that I learned in like real estate school, like real estate school teach you how, how to not get sued, but it, it doesn't teach you how, how to sell, right? <laughs> so uh, that was like, the biggest part for me because I never thought about myself as a sales salesman. Right. But, but I had to find my own niche where it's like, I, I don't sell you. I'm trying to help you. And like the first couple of transactions and stuff that I did, it was all, all about like, well, cool. Like what's my, commission check going to be right but but eventually that like translated for me because that mindset wasn't doing anything for me so I had to kind of evolve and like find my purpose and like what I find was when I don't think about like the commission or like the money or like whatever like that stuff is going to work itself out when I'm just thinking about doing the right thing and helping people. Right. And, 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 and the, uh, that was the learning experience that I had to do. But once that, that, that like switch ha- ha- happened again, 
it's like just been been straightforward for me i think yeah i love that yeah dude i mean the, the, look the consumer can smell commission breath a mile away you oh know, my right? God. and, and, like, and like, you know you, you were focused on that which again you you know they probably sense that and, and whatever and then you yeah. transition and pivot to that focus into kind of that servant uh, a supporting you know mindset of you know how what can i do in any way possible to help my clients accomplish their real estate goals make this the best experience yeah. make it all about them and that money follows um yeah i love that man and but that has been like a good thing for me too like i was very fortunate to like come into this business with a little bit of money myself right that that like i wasn't dying for the paycheck to to like pay rent or put food on the table like like my my uh, my thought was this was like to build something sustainable from like the ground up and i didn't really care if it took like uh, six months or eight months or a year before my first pay paycheck but i wanted something that that like could like grow and 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 represent who i was yeah i love that dude and, and we're going to get into that i got one question though yeah. for you first um um and this is kind of just based on you know uh, uh, uh you know some of the the talking points that you provided um uh and, and one of the things that you said on there you talk about being proud of what you do you know, being proud of what we do. And, you know, I went through this too. And I think almost all real estate agents or at least a big percentage of them, so many that I talk to it, you know, because in the public eye, we, we have, there's a big negative narrative, you know, towards real estate agents. I mean, if you look at the likability index here in the United States, firefighters at the top, realtors are at the bottom. Like we're below car salesmen, we're below attorneys, you know, right? And look, man, we get knocked on in the movies and TV shows and they make us, you know, sound and look like just money hungry idiots. And yeah. and, and yeah. so there's kind of that negative, uh, 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 you know, narrative out there about us. And, you know, I've, I've went through this and, and from reading this about you, you know, you went through this as well of, you know, kind of that embarrassment of, of, you know, you go from, oh, what do you do? Well, I'm a professional NHL athlete. Yeah. You know, right? And then it's like, whoa, what? Like, you know, people are like, oh, I'm in the, the presence of a celebrity here, you know, right? Like a, of a, yeah. a rock star, you know? And, and, and now you go to, you know, the realtor, um, which now I know that you're proud of and which I believe we all should be in. Um, but, but, you know, what were, how did you own that and, you know, switch from it kind of being, something that you weren't necessarily proud to share with people, you know, to really owning it and switching kind of that mindset to be proud of it. Yeah, no, like it was super hard in the beginning. And like, just like you said, going from like being the professional NHL goalie to being a realtor, it's kind of like from like the top to like the bottom right away, right? In one step. But, but, but I, I uh, think that like the biggest part for me was like just to realize to myself that like I am actually helping people and I am like not at the bottom of the <laughs> the chain right like like I I uh, the biggest step was just like realize myself that I was proud of what I was doing and and like I actually felt that I was providing a service rather than just selling someone. Right. And, and uh, once that flip happened, it like took me maybe like three or four, four like months because in the beginning I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm Eddie Lack, like retired hockey goalie, but now I'm doing real estate. <laughs> While like now it's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, Eddie Lack and I'm a re re realtor and, and it's like it 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 took took a while but I'm like proud that I'm at that moment now. Yeah, that's so awesome. And you know, I, I always tell people, man, like if you want to change the if you want to change the world, get blood and get into real estate and become a realtor. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, and I, I know a lot of people don't know this, but. You know, every, every transaction that, that we close, there's over 30 different trades that that creates 
job security for? Like when you start breaking down title, lender, yeah. processors, underwriters, utility companies, movers, yeah. you know, right? So every time that we close one transaction, that's over 30 different trades that are fed and able to put food on the table for them and their families. You know, yeah. it infuses $60,000 into to our, our GDP, into our economy, in addition to the commission that we make. Um, um, you know, so, I mean, it has this just massive, massive impact. And I don't think that there is another industry that, not only can we go out there and support our clients and help our clients, and we all know how important our homes are to us, you know, and our families, um, so yeah. we can help our clients with that. Um, but the, I don't know if there's another industry that has a bigger overall impact and that feeds the, the, our economy and creates as many opportunities for people as real estate, you know? So, no. so it's, you know, it's, 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 you know, something that we all should be proud of, man. Um, so walk us through, dude. Okay. You get licensed. Uh, 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 you're, you're get, you got licensed 2018. So, I mean, we're talking, you know, not even two full years into this journey, dude. And, and look, most realtors, the statistics are 90% drop out in the first three years. They struggle. Yeah. They can't, you know, like you said, you go to real estate school. Yeah. It's great to teach you how to keep your ass out of trouble, but they don't teach you. Okay. How do you go start making money and get a client? Um, um, and, uh, um, you know, so you get your license, like walk us through, you know, maybe like your first year of, like, what did you do to go out there and start creating clients and generating uh, a success to, to ensure that you didn't become a statistic, but also create the momentum to let's continue to propel your success now? Yeah. So I think for me to just start, the biggest thing was just to like tell people that I was in real estate because through hockey and everything, I, I, I feel like through hockey and uh, being a pre- pretty nice guy if I say, say, say it myself <laughs> but 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 I created kind of like like this this big sphere of in, in influence for for myself so uh, that was kind of just like my way in and like there's so 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 many like ex-professional athletes and and uh, uh, people that they know that I know that I could ca- kind of help just to start my own career off and 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 uh, uh, just by like letting everyone know on like social media and st- stuff like that 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 like I was in 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 real estate and like this is what I'm doing now and I can help you uh, then things kind of kind of just like roll on its own I think it's just like uh, I did one transaction I think and then that person s- said to another person that I did a good job right and 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 uh, yeah it kind of just snow snowballed from there I think yeah so if I remember correctly from you know you walking us through your, your journey and your story um, um, I mean, you guys had also just moved to Scottsdale, you know, yeah. recently. So you didn't have a big, you know, local sphere of influence per se, you know, yeah. right. But you, you, you looked at, okay, well, how can I tap into this, you know, this nationwide sphere of influence that I have through my ex career? Yeah. Um, um, you know, but then from there, uh, um, you know, a lot of realtors don't necessarily know or, or, or might be afraid of or have a fear of putting that out there to the world, you know, right. Um, and not in a, 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 a lot of, I think a lot of that fear comes from, of they don't want to kind of be that salesy douchey person, no, you know, right. So like, how, how, cause I, it sounds like not only did you let them know, but you let people know in the right manner um, and then kind of kept continue to keep that front of mind, you know, right. Um, that kept feeding, you know, those deals and clients, plus, you know, serving people at a high level here that started creating those referrals and so forth. But, you know, when you started to announce it as a new realtor, because a lot of people like are like, dude, I'm new. I don't have any experience yet. Even people that I know probably don't want to work with me yet. You know, right. Like, what did you do and how did you announce it to the world? You know, uh, social media. I mean, when I say the world, your world, your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no, it, it, so I got my license in November and I honestly think that it took until like May before I like, like announced it, announced it. Right. Because I, I was still in my hockey play playing mind. And, 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 and I, uh, even now when I do my social media and everything, I'm like very careful with like 
with like still showing me and like what I do and like not just like selling people and like se- se- selling people and, and and like just throwing and shoving real estate down their throat, right? <laughs> like I I want like my social media to be a platform where like people can 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 still communicate with me about like normal things that are going going on in life or like my obsession for tacos or or like uh, uh, my job that I'm doing with ASU now and everything like that right so 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 I I I I I I, I sorry Sometimes I stutter. That's why I I call myself the stut- stuttering sweet at times. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, I I think that uh, there is a really fine line with like selling, but also just like promoting yourself a little bit, but like showing who you are for most of the time right and like that's kind of what i'm trying to do with my social media and everything yeah one of my mentors darren hardy the way that he frames social media yeah uh yeah in one of our masterminds i thought was such a brilliant way of he's like look social media think of it as just the new reality tv other than we are the own stars of our own channels you know right and reality reality tv is the highest watched thing of all time and like look i mean people People want to see you live in your life. And yeah, you sprinkle on real estate stuff and in a you know effective way that always can, you know, keeps them top of mind that you're a realtor without being the salesy, douchey, you know, pushy person that nobody, you know, nobody likes that turns them off. You know, but then it you're also letting them to get to know you and connect with you. Not that you're just in real estate, but outside of real estate, what your hobbies are, what your passions are, um, and so forth. And then, you know, from there, uh, you know, because it sounds like this has worked so well for you. I mean, do you have like a posting strategy? I mean, is there a goal on a daily basis or or different tweaks and things that you found um, that you need to be consistent with and do that kind of lead to, you know, maximizing, you know, this? Because you look at, I look at social media as it's a social CRM. You know, yeah. just like our, our, our CRM that we might have for open houses and internet leads coming in, well, social media is just a, a social connection CRM for, you know, people that may be able to do, <laughs> potentially do business with us. Yeah, yeah, no, like I, I try to kind of split them all even be- between my interests, w- w- which are real estate, hockey, uh, golf, and tacos pretty much, right? So, <laughs> so I, I kind of try to just split them up like that and like do one one fourth in each cat category right and like that way people don't get too tired about one thing i think and you can't 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 kind of just like keep the interest right like my my uh, biggest challenge has has been trying to to transfer my twitter followers because on Twitter, I do have like 160,000 followers or something. But on Instagram, I only have like 6,000 followers or like whatever. Uh, before when I played, I had like 100,000 Instagram, but stu- stu- stupid me deleted it. <laughs> uh, yeah. But my cha- challenge has like kind of been to like, transfer people from the Twitter to the Instagram and like keep them engaged and, and, and like uh, bring value to them on like both platforms. Right. So, so that's, that's like been uh, the biggest challenge that I've seen now, I think. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 what I love about business dude is there's always more to be done. Oh, you know, right. Like either there's never a time where there isn't a challenge we need to overcome or something that we can improve and you know, we'll never learn it all. We'll never like, it's, it's just this like, you know, amazing thing that has no finish line, you know? Right. Um, yeah. So then, you know, are you, um, you know, cause it sounds like also you, you have, you know, all that network that you had um, with the relationships in your sphere of influence through, I mean, in social media as a tool to help kind of, 
communicate and keep those connections going. And, and it yeah. sounds like he had a, a strong building there before he got into real estate. Um, but then it also sounds like you've had a lot of success with, with getting kind of those uh, referral business from your actual clients. And, you know, is that part of your strategy too with social media is, Hey, the second I get a client or, you know, right. Like I'm going to connect with them on social media and, and make sure to keep feeding those connections. So I get the right people seeing my posts. A hundred percent. And, and, and like, uh, that's what comes from like confidence about doing some deals and like feeling proud of the deals that you've done. Right. Like, and, 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 uh, uh once I get a client, I always try to, to, to like engage with them everywhere. Right. It, 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 it's like, uh, uh, Twitter or Instagram or like Facebook, right? But 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 like actually take 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 like the time to find out things about them, right? Like when is their birthday? Like like just like small stuff like that that you can plug into your C- CRM and everything, and like small small stuff like that is like a huge help and 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 like it kind of helps keeping the conversation going too, because like there's a ton of clients that I got like a year ago that like might not be looking to buy until like three or six months from now. Right. So, so just like uh, keeping the conversation going, it's like really important. I think. Yep. Love that, man. So then as we, as so that, you know, that sounds like, what really helped propel you out of the gate with that first year. Then as we enter into, um, let's just say 2020, cause this would be your, your, uh, um, cause he really got in at the very end of 2018. So really 2019 was, was your, no, your first very year. end of 2019. So th- this is my first year. Yeah. So your first full year. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, so if we look at, if we look at, okay, this year then, um, you know, it, it, is it still that continued strategy or has there been other things that, that you've learned that you've been able to add to that? Maybe, you know, new uh, other ways of, of generating new business and so forth. Yeah. So, so I, uh, I, I, I kind of felt that that was like a good starting point for me, but like you always want to grow, especially high. And I ne- never want to be like a, uh, happy or content with what I've done. I'm, I'm like always looking like, what can I do next? Right. So I, I, I want the referral to be like one part of my bit bit business, but I want to grow like several different uh, streams of leads. Right. So, so uh, just recently I like started paying for some PPC leads and everything like that and and like that that that's really starting to pick up i think and i'm more learning like the tricks behind it and like the cold calling and everything which is not easy for a stuttering swede to do like the cold <laughs> calls and everything right but it's like small tricks and everything like that so so i i made i think it was four months ago I actually made the decision to hire an assistant too to like help me with everything and like more help me organize. But I also saw that cold calling was not something that I was great at. So I just hired her to make the initial contact for me. And once that initial contact is like made it it's like super easy for me to like come in and actually start talking real estate with 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 them right like you because the introduction and everything was made and like now it's like go time from here right so so hot 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 hiring her to like make make those initial contacts have like made a huge difference for me and 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 that's like uh, repaying me like like five six seven eight times of like what i'm actually paying her right so yeah. so so like uh, 
just taking a gamble and like investing in your business and in yourself, even though it could be scary in the beginning to, to, to like pay X amount of dollars to someone and like you have no idea how, how it's going to pan out. Right. But, but, but I like pro- promise you, it, it, it's like <laughs> worth it 10 times. Right. Yeah. Every, the, the hardest hire is always your first one, man. You know, yeah. as long as you get the right person, um, um, then, then you're like, why didn't I do this sooner? And then yeah, you keep exactly. hiring more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, so then with, and I love that, man. I love the love. Um, I mean, number one that you identified, okay, Hey, look with, with this leg of this new business that I'm adding, you know, what, what are the bottlenecks that I'm experiencing and, and how do I create a solution for that bottleneck? Okay. Yeah. Well, let me then hire somebody that can, warm that lead up, you know, right. Um, um, and then, you know, get that data that then allows me to come in there and be effective at then what I'm good at, you know, right. And that's awesome, dude. Um, so when it comes to that, like what, what is she doing on that kind of first call? What kind of data do do you get and so forth? Um, and then what is the kind of that introduction look like? where then now allows you to be so much more successful jumping in on that next call. Yeah. So, so she, she, she basically just asked them the basic questions, right? Like how many bedrooms, like how many baths, like do you want a pool? Like how big, like what area are you looking for? Right. And like, once I get that information, then I go to like uh, the MLS and I do a search and everything for them. And like, once the search is like up, then I follow up with them and like, Hey, like, what did you think about the search? Like, do you like any of these houses? And like, like then it kind of just like snowballs from there. Right. But, but, but she, uh, Take, take, takes care of those in initial calls that 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 like I really don't have time for right now anyway right so 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 I I uh, saw that I was really bad at something and I got help for it right <laughs> yep love it man so and you're also a dude man that uh, I mean look first full year in real estate um, and, and not that you only do luxury, you know, right. I mean, you're helping families and, and, you know, the kind of more median price point as well, you know, but you're also do that's out there sell million dollar plus homes, um, you know, in your, your, you know, first year, which do that's intimidating, man. It's intimidating for a lot of realtors. It's, you know, um, um, it, it, what, I don't know if that was something that was a challenge for you, kind of that mindset of, you know, well, look, you know, because a lot of times we might think in our mind that it, the process is different. The people are so much different in that, you know, luxury price point versus maybe a $300,000 client. Um, um, you know, if, if that was something that you struggle with, you know, like how did you overcome that? And then, um, you know, what also kind of a follow-up question that I just, so I don't forget is, you know, what are some of the differences that you've discovered um uh so maybe we have a cl- somebody that's watching this right now that maybe their average price point is 350 you know yeah. maybe they're in another marketplace it's 350 you know but they're looking to start breaking into the luxury market you know like what are some of the differences that you've seen when you're working with you know maybe that three four hundred thousand client and then that you know 1.5 million dollar plus client um yeah. uh that you need to be prepared for so I didn't feel that in our market that it was such a big difference between the million and like the 500, right? Like, like that's all kind of the same, but when you start to go higher than the million, uh, that, that, that's like, people know more about the process, I think. And like people expect more of your knowledge. Like, like when you're in uh, the price range around 500, I, I feel, feel, feel like you're, you're the sole driver of the transaction, right? When uh, you are working with the high net clients, like, they've already sold six or seven houses themselves right so they expect a little bit more from 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 you but they want to be more in the driver's seat and like 
you just kind of have to let him do that, right? And like, because the whole transaction is like their transaction, right? And 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 um, like, I feel like when agents get 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 in trouble, is that like when their ego take take takes over and they're like, well, no, like this is my transaction and I'm gonna move move this forward while I kind of just saw it saw, saw it as like I'm one part of the transaction but there's like so many people involved in this and and my job is really to make all of these people work together instead of working against each other so uh, that was like the biggest learning curve with that I think and uh, what I also noticed with the agents that are working with like the two, three, $4 million homes, like, like they're so much easier to deal with than some of the agents that have like two, $300,000 homes. Yeah. Right. And like, they always get back to you. They're always very uh, professional. There's, there, there's like no egos or anything. Right. And, and like, uh, yeah, that was something that I had to learn like really quick. I think. Yeah, no, and that makes sense. I mean, number one, it may, I mean, somebody that's created enough success in, in their career, their business, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, obviously they're, they're going to be somebody that I don't want to say that all wealthy high net worth people are, are extremely intelligent, but no, on, on, a, on a grand scale, you know, they typically, yeah. they're not dummies, you know, right? Um, plus, they're used to, you know, they're leaders, man, um, yeah. um, in their, you know, career, you know, right? So, it totally makes sense that they'd want to kind of have a deeper lead in that that process. Yep. And, and like and you said, you man, detach, yeah. yeah, detach from that ego, man, and, yeah. and you're just there to, to guide and facilitate the process and, yeah. and, and you know, help them accomplish their goals, man. I love that. And, you know, now that you kind of had a, a, a variation of taste, you know, um, you know, and the, and the, uh, cause what, what's the, what's the median, I think like North Scottsdale, like the median a- average price points, like in the what 700s or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. um, um, but you know, now that you kind of had a taste of a variation, I mean, do you see yourself pulled more towards the higher end luxury market? Um, um, and do you see yourself kind of focusing and niching down more going forward on the, that, that higher end market? Yeah, like I feel like that's what I'm striving at. Like I I do have some really big clients right right now that I'm trying to help and and if it works out, it works out. But I do think that uh me trying to prove myself at like the next level, like like there's the three, four, five million dollar homes. I I think that if I can just prove myself once there, that that like those people that are selling or trying to buy those homes are gonna tr- trust me more because I've like done one of these before, right? And 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 uh, I don't want to just like uh, niche myself a little bit too too much or too early because I still think that I'm new and like, I, I, I still like really appreciate like each and every tra- tra- transaction that I get, get to do. But, 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 uh, eventually I, I like do see, see, see myself more moving into the luxury market. Yep. Love it, man. So then I'm also curious, man, like, uh, through 2020, so your first full year in real estate, which yeah. you know, obviously you've, had massive success and, 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 you know, um, uh, continue to just create more and more success, um, in that time frame. but also man, like 2020 flipped all of our worlds upside down, man. Uh, you know, COVID has been insane for us and, and luckily you are, and I are in a market, um, uh, we're in the same market and meaning Maricopa County. I mean, I'm kind of more of the outside suburbs and, and, you know, so forth, um, uh, you know, not niche down or, or focus on Scottsdale per se, but all in the same, you know, circle. Yeah. But with that being said, dude, um, you know, we were kind of blessed in that we didn't get shut down in the way like no, Michigan no. did, for example, where 
the, you couldn't record on properties, couldn't close on properties, you know, right? So we were still classified as essential, um, um, but man, it still disrupted a lot of business, um, um, a lot of realtors, businesses and so forth. And, you know, what were some of the things that you did to, to kind of take this head on and, and shift and adapt, um, um, uh, you know, and improve the things that you could control based on this, you know, that allowed you to, you know, cause obviously I mean, this is, I know you haven't been in the business for one full year. So, it, you know, I don't want to say it's your best year. I mean, it is your best year, but for, for, I don't care, dude, like you're this year, you're going to do as better than a lot of agents that have been in this for 20 years, yeah. you know, right. Doing a year. So, um, um, you know, what were some of those things that you did to kind of pivot and, and adapt to, to not lose that momentum? Yeah. So I think that f- first I was really lucky because I worked with mostly buyers in the beginning. So when COVID first hit and everything, uh, and all the sellers and everything, they were so like scared that the market was gonna crack, crack, crash and everything, right? Like I forced so- some of my clients to buy pro- properties then, like, like, uh, there was a few that was like, well, we don't know what the market's going to do. Like we may want to wait. And like, this was a friend of mine. So I could be a little bit harder on, on him. Right. But like, I, I like twisted his arm and I said, it's not going to go, 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 go down. If you want to buy like now is the time because him and his wife were, one of these people that like we looked at 80 properties before COVID, right? And and like it, it was 10 offers on everything, right? So once this like hit hit and I like forced him to go on a con on a place, like he called me the other week and he he was like, dude, like like I'm so thankful for like what you did for us and everything like we like pro- 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 probably made like 60 70 grand like like just because you force us to buy like 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 in the time where you for- force us right and like like uh, i was fortunate enough to have a lot of buyers instead of sellers at that time because like it was really stressful being a seller right like like super super stressful but uh, what i did to adapt when it kind of slowed down for me a little bit there i think it was uh, april or may there when it was just like not a whole lot was going going on like i i more took took the time to like focus on my social media and like trying to really understand it and like read about it and and like build my social media instead because like there wasn't a lot of stuff happening in face to face and so so like you kind of had to adapt to doing it on the computer instead right and uh, i finished like my ce classes uh even though I'm like a year away, from <laughs> yeah. like, but, but like, there's always something to do, right? Like, like, like there's always something to do. And, and, and like, uh, if you're bored, you're like not doing it the right way or like think thinking enough outside of the box, because like, there's always stuff that you can do to, to, to like better your business or like better yourself. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. And I had a lot of agents that were reaching out that were in states like Michigan and New York that completely got shut down where they couldn't do business, you know, right? Um, And I'm like, look, if you can't work in the business, that's your opportunity to work on it. Master a new skill set. Improve your systems, your processes, you know, right? Take the time to slow down and and tweak and improve your presentations and practice those. And, you know, as you mentioned, man, but but it's that, as you mentioned, there's no reason you should ever be bored. No. But that is your driven mentality of, of, you know, like you're here to go pro, you know, if you will, just like you did with your, yeah. your last successful career, but here to Born dominate. A choice. <laughs> What's that? 
boredom is a choice. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Love that, man. So, um, you know, I, I man, I know that, you know, I mean, this is your, your first full year into this. Um, so it might be tough, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we have to continue having experience to see what truly is possible and so forth. But, you know, I, I'm curious of, you know, like, like, what's, do you have a long-term vision? You know, what, what do you maybe see this, you inside your real estate career in five years and 10 years and, you know, um, so forth? Yeah. So my, my, um, uh... My dream is not to be a broker. I like know that a lot of pe- people want to want to open their own bro- brokerage and be like a bro- broker. Like I don't like like I don't think that that that's something that I want to do. Like I I uh, just want to focus on like what I do best and like that's that's like helping people into the right house for them, right? Like yeah. I. Uh, I I think that uh, a money goal for me is like to one year earn more than I did in my best year in hockey, <laughs> like because that would kind of prove prove to me that like all right you're over the hockey part. Like you're more successful in real estate than you ever were in ho- hockey, right? So just like leave it but but yeah my my uh five year goal is like not to be a broker but i do want to have my own team under me and like i i do like to teach and 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 like provide value to other people so uh i just started that journey now so i have one guy that I'm training and I'm teaching him and everything and 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 which like seems a little bit weird because I've only been in it for one year <laughs> but 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 I I uh, feel like I've like been through a lot this year and I've like gone through a lot of different uh, uh, stages and like different transactions and everything so so so, so like I I really enjoy teaching so uh, that's what i see in like five years from now just like in some capacity me having like like a bigger team under me yeah love that man so <clears throat> i got one last question for you here but before we jump in that eddie um you know for those that are watching and listening dude um we have i mean this is you know a, a, a podcast for, for for real, you know, real estate agents to help them learn and grow their real estate business. So we're all here, you know, realtors from you know, really all over the planet, um, um, but primarily here in the U S and Canada. Um, and man, for, for those that are watching and listening that want to continue following you, maybe follow you on social media, seeing all the amazing things that you're up to, you know, plus our market is a huge Revo market, you know, right. So maybe they have a client, um, you know, Maybe from Chicago that's moving here, you know, whatever, just like, like your, your wife. I'm um, going to come to you. <laughs> uh, no, 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 man. Uh, um, um, but, uh, uh, you know, maybe they have a, ref- like, but look, dude, like, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, we're in the same market, but we're really not competitors because, no, exactly. I mean, I don't, we, I mean, our, my, our niche is that second time move up home buyer that's in that, you know, well, for years, it's been kind of a 250 to 450 price point. Now today, it's kind of like the 350 yeah. to you know 600 thousand dollar price point. You know, right? Um, um, but dude, if somebody like I, I I'm not a luxury specialist. You know, right? Um, um, that luxury if somebody has a luxury client that they're referring to our marketplace. They're going to be way better served by you than me personally. You know, right? Um, you know, and so forth. So you know, where's the best place for people to you know continue following you and start following you on social media, see all the amazing stuff that you're up to and, and follow this, you know, a, amazing career that we know that you're all going to just go out there and dominate in, um, as well as if they have a referral to send you and so forth, like where are all the best places to do that at? Yeah. So, uh, my email is Eddie at Kenneth James realty.com. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Eddie lack 31 and Twitter at Eddie lack. Uh, yeah. Like with other realtors and everything there's a lot of them out there that that see other realtors as competitions right like like there's enough houses to go around for everyone like like uh, that's why i'm really into 
the teaching part of it too because yep. like i i uh, want to teach teach other people and like if i can just help one person and make that person's life better then i succeeded right yeah, that's so awesome, man. Um, love it, dude. So, and you're so right, man. You know, when I first got in this business in 2005, I'm kind of, you know, aging myself here. <laughs> but back then, dude, the industry was very much so a scarcity mindset, you know, right? The, the okay, in order for me to win in my real estate business, that must mean that you need to lose. And there wasn't a lot of sharing. And there wasn't a lot of camaraderie. And, and thank God, <clears throat> you know, that's pivoted and changed over the years. Yeah. Um, um, but look, man, I, I'm in that same philosophy of, there's enough to go around because there's only, you know, what 1% of, of human beings that are truly committed to their craft. And there's enough to go around for those that are committed, man. Like those that are committed, we can all learn from each other. We can all mastermind with each other, even though we might be in the same direct marketplace, but there's more than enough business, you know, to go around and, and the ability for us to learn together. And, and, you know, I, I love that, uh, 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 that abundance mindset, man. Um, yeah. All right, dude. So last question for you, man. If, if and I know it's been, a, you know, a, a short stint of time, but again, you've done in, you know, your first full year that a lot of uh, what a lot of agents don't do in, you know, five years, you know, right. So, um, so you, you, not a lot of time, but it was still a lot of experience. Um, um, but if Eddie today, knowing everything, you know, now could go back to Eddie, when you first jumped in the industry and give yourself two pieces of advice that you feel would have really been impactful saved you some pain and allowed you to, to, you know, cr propel and create into this, you know, success momentum that much quicker. What would those two pieces of advice be? I would say one, like take your time. Like I, I think that especially in our profession, we like do get really caught up that everything has to happen fast and it has to happen now that like, you maybe like skip some steps on 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 like the way, <laughs> right? And 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 the, uh, the biggest piece of advice that I can give for myself a year ago <laughs> uh, would 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 be just like take your time and like learn everything and like read through everything. Like don't don't like skip through parts that you think think you know, right? And and uh, uh the second one would be be proud of what you're doing like like i i honestly think that we, we are we are creating a service for people that are helping a ton of people and like saving people a ton of money and 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 uh, i think that that's something to be prou proud of and 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 i uh when I look at the real estate profession, I don't see us as the bottom of the food chain. Like I see it up here because I, I, I think that we're helping people from a ton of headache and hassle uh, compared to using these online agents and everything now right like yeah. like like i i honestly think that we are giving an excellent service that we should be praised for <laughs> yeah couldn't agree more man such powerful words dude powerful vice man um and eddie dude again i know that this will be released uh, you know sometime early january but as of us sitting down together recording this this is on new year's eve and the fact that you took time away from your you know your family and your your busy real estate career especially on on new year's eve as well with with you know being the holiday it truly means a lot man that you took time to be here with us and this has been a huge honor brother thank you thank you so much for ha having me yep I love, the podcast. I love it yeah thank you so much man it means a lot dude thank you again and those uh, that are watching and listening as always Truly appreciate you guys. Truly appreciate your support. Truly appreciate you being here. Keep up the amazing work. Keep kicking ass. And we will see you next time. Peace. I hope you enjoyed this GSD Mode podcast episode. Now make sure you get shit done and smash that subscribe button now.